Happy New Year's everybody, I hope all of you had a fantastic holidays wherever you are. Because today, we get back into more Reddit responses, goody! But before we do that, a couple things. Over on Void Interactive's Instagram, they released a new photo that says, Happy Holidays! We're working hard through the holiday break and can't wait to show you what we've got. Over on the Reddit it says, One of our team members made this for the community. Merry Christmas from Void. Somebody in the comment says, So are there different levels of armor? That looks like some heavy flak they got on there. And the developer replies with, There are currently two. Heavy and light, as well as some more specific adjustments players can make. Sick! So players can customize loadout of teammates similar to how we could in SWAT 4? And the developer applies with correct. Whee! The picture itself looks like a couple of SWAT units that are sitting in the back of what I presume is to be a SWAT truck, just judging by, you know, the way that everybody's sitting. The way that the guy down in front looks makes me think that he's getting off of said truck. Could this be how the mission starts? Like, an intro of some sort? I believe that the devs have mentioned it, but never fully went into detail about that. Most of the stuff that's in the picture we've already seen before. We've seen the SCAR, the M16, a lot of the gear we've already talked about in previous videos. But one thing that this picture screams is the fact that the patch on the shoulder is very customizable. I mean, this isn't the first time we've heard about it, but this is actually the first time we've seen it in action. The patches of Easy Street's picture with the Tacticat emote from the Discord on it, which tells me that they're paying attention to the Discord. I mean, why wouldn't they, right? But the PNG Santa hat tells me that they were paying attention at a time when people in the Discord were spamming people saying, you aren't festive enough. So there was a bit of a movement in the Discord where people started to deck their pics with Halls of Jolly. -la -la -la. It was an interesting time and I still remember the pings. But fun nonetheless. Well, I guess that's all I really got to say about this picture. Let's move on to the next one. A user by the name of VP has created a internet movie firearms database to keep track of Ready or Not's guns. And thus far, he seems to have done a fantastic job of uh, naming them and putting pictures of them. Just thought I'd mention that. All right, now we get into the Reddit. But before we do, this is just a friendly reminder to read the FAQ because maybe it already has an answer to your question. All right, let's go. The first one we're going to be starting off with is Seek and You Shall Receive. What are your plans for your game after release? And if this game is successful with community, Grunter replies with, Dropping expansion packs from different regions with different gameplay rules is our big one, and quite likely a console port. Different regions, you say? Sounds pretty cool. Someone down in the comments says, Hoping for an Australian SRG? And the developer replies with, Russell Kowite, not sure if I'm saying that name right, Tier 1 Operator Play Model, when? So I saw a video of this guy, and there's a part where he's fucking naked on the beach, like, what the fuck's going on here? <laughs> Alright, moving on. Up next we have a question on cheat codes? No, I asked this question along with the question about an Iron Man mode, but only the latter was commented on. Would there be a cheat code that would disable the weapon models and make the player's body invisible? It would be similar to SWAT 4's hands down command, which was a throwback to SWAT 3. Weapon and body models had to be enabled with a console command, hands up in that game, and the developer applies with no comment. Hmm. Imagine really not having cheat codes. I Man, I don't think I would ever do it you know i want to at least like go through the game like on the toughest difficulty and beat it before i decide to use cheat codes at least that's just my philosophy the next one reads is this game going to be fun or sad? A post I saw made me think this. Texts like these make me fear that Ready or Not might become a depressing and unenjoyable experience for me because of all the extreme themes and violence. Don't get me wrong, a serious game about police work obviously needs these themes, but the focus on gore and the themes portrayed in the first trailer make me think a lot lately by a user. So I guess my question is, will the game be too dark to be enjoyable? Are there too many taboos? Don't get me wrong, I have nothing against the dark storylines and taboos. In fact, I encourage them, but too much of them too fast can have the opposite effect. Sort of know the person viewing them if you get what I mean, or just make them really sad, which generally is not the reason I play video games. I mean that I don't want to play through the whole game feeling bad for people and stuff. Sorry for possible spelling errors and stuff. English is not my first language and I've had a couple beers. I mean, I imagine for something like Ready or Not, that's going to be a bit challenging because, you know, in any police situation, nothing is ever in a good light to say the least hmm let's see what the developer has to say we're not 19th century russian novelist there will be a good balance when the story calls for it all right let's move on up next we have 
Party game modes. It would be dope to see party game modes. Pistols only, gun game, and whatever else that may be fun aside from a ranked and casual like modes. On fantasy maps too, Candyland, a planetarium, or a western ghost town. This is something that Siege does not have. Again, people comparing Ready or Not to Siege like... Man, I really need to make a video that tells them apart or something. I don't know. I've been thinking about it. Somebody in the comments says, if it were community-made maps, I'm 110% cool with that. Too many other games already do silly, though. Would rather the devs focus on realistic content. We don't need to be running around as green army men in a child sandbox like COD World War II. Especially if that would be taking away from realistic scenarios we could have had. As for the game modes, an action sack type playlist with silly stuff would be fun. Just needs to be social unranked. And the developer replies with, I love the term action sack and the option does exist. Ooh, pretty cool. Can't wait to see what it looks like. Up next we have explosives, bombs. As we know, SWAT 4 has bombs you could defuse. We will most likely see something similar, but will us, the player, or any team member should be able to defuse them or should EOD be called in? Will we get a bomb defusing minigame or will we have a loading bar like SWAT 4 had? And the developer replies with, no minigame. Bomb defuser ideally will be a minigame in the future if we add it. So wait, there's not gonna be any bombs? Oh, up next we have, I saw something on the compass in the teaser. The number 13 on the compass is kind of paused, and it's so close to 15, it can't be 13. It has to be 14. Maybe the trailer will go live on 13th of November. Just pure speculation, and the developer replies with, this ain't it. This is an old post, so... Yeah, that's not... <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's move on. Up next we have weight by equipment. Is there going to be a mechanic in the game where you start with a certain weight depending on your equipment and as you play? The less ammo you have, the lighter you are. And the developer replies with, All of your items contribute to the player's overall weight, which in turn affects your mobility. This doesn't affect any weapon handling, however, just maximum speed. It's basically the same thing behind SWAT 4. Alright, well, let's move on to the next one. Ah, the next one says, Is no punching really set in stone? The point was brought up in this thread, and it basically uh, refers to another thread that was talking about punching and stuff and how he doesn't agree with that. About the lack of punching, a mechanic we see in SWAT 4, is this really set in stone? Issues such as the one brought up in that thread about an iffy situation and lack of ammo are valid in my eyes. Are our characters just too stupid to use melee combat to change the flow of the situation? I mean, say we flash an enemy and are shooting at him to get down. If he resists, we could just punch him as seen in SWAT 4. Is it now impossible to do this in Ron? Or is there some sort of substitute for this now? My understanding is that the original SWAT 4 did didn't actually have any melee. This was actually added in by the mod, I believe. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Well, let's see what the developer has to say. Grunter replies with, It's currently not a feature, but there's always a chance we'll add it in the future if the situation calls for it. Not set in stone, though. Just have to make sure that if we include it, it fits in with the game design ethos. All right, let's move on. The next one reads, Suppressor mechanics? Since this game is going for realism, how will suppressors affect weapons in this game? In most games, the benefit of hiding your muzzle flash and making your gun quieter is balanced by the suppressor reducing your range. But that's not how that works in real life. I mean, if you add a barrel onto it, doesn't that increase your range? But I don't know. Real suppressors increase muzzle velocity, decrease recoil, and hide your muzzle flash. So there are literally no downsides to using a suppressor in a real gun. So how would this game be balanced if it is going to have a realistic suppressor mechanics? Edit. Just saw the other thread where Grunter said suppressors would increase the muzzle velocity, but how exactly will that benefit be balanced in game? And will suppressors give a recoil benefit? Somebody in the comments says, I'm guessing increased barrel length making it harder and see QB situations, slightly longer transitions between high and low ready stances, etc., and more sway. Also, I don't know, maybe the loud sound of unsuppressed gunfire might have a larger chance to make suspects scared and more disoriented when being shot at at close quarters, and the developer replies with, yeah, basically this. They make the weapon more awkward to use at close range, because the automatic low ready range is increased among other things. Hmm, interesting. Alright, let's move on. The next one says, important question. Okay, devs, I think this is a question that needs to be addressed. Is the ARG in any sense related to the gameplay trailer? Not asking specifics, just want to know if it has anything to do with it. Thanks. And the developer replies with, ARG extends beyond the trailer. Holy shit. Later on in the comments, somebody says, Is there currently a point in trying to finish it besides getting it done quicker? Or would we get stuck anyway at some point? Because we are missing something that hasn't been revealed? And the developer replies with, 
you'd be missing something that hasn't been revealed yet. Mm. The next one says, so close to 6,000 subs. And the developer replies with, much love to this community, by the way. I know we've been silent, but it's good to see that people aren't burning this place down over it. The fact that people have been able to come together over a game with very little information out about it shows me that we've got something very special here. Tis true, but how long can we hold out? All right, moving on. Do all AI officers use the lean function? I believe SWAT 3 was the only game in which the AI actually leaned effectively around corners and objects in the way. In SWAT 4, it was pretty much non-existent for the AI. But what about in Ron? And the developer replies with, both suspects and SWAT dynamically lean and crouch. Alright, cool, let's move on. The next one says, will this game be affected by the RTX graphics card? And the developer replies with, not at first. We'd love to add ray trace support though. Hmm, interesting. Alright, let's move on. The next one says, one in the chamber? Title says it all. Will there be a one in the chamber mechanic like Battlefield? Didn't see it mentioned in the FAQ. And the developer replies with, when you start, you'll have plus one. So yeah, one in the chamber for sidearms, rifles, shotguns, etc. Play a first drawn animation. Oh, pretty cool. All right, moving on. The next one says, pepper spray, pepper balls. How effective will pepper spray, pepper balls be in Ron? Will accessories such as glasses, sunglasses, goggles, gas masks, and non-gas masks, hockey masks, balaclavas, and riot helmets, for example, reduce their effectiveness? In SWAT 4, OC doesn't work against gas masks and riot helmets, but people wearing other accessories are still affected? Is it ineffective to spray a subject from behind or from the side? Can subjects still fire their weapon even under the influence of OC? Last but not least, can pepper spray, pepper balls kill? Serious question. And the developer replies with, OC won't kill, beanbags can. It will only be mitigated by the gas masks. Hmm, interesting. Alright, let's move on. The next one says, asymmetrical PvP? Are there any plans for an asymmetrical PvP as in SWAT vs drug dealer punks, Yakuza, paramilitary, and so on depending on randomly picked maps, scenarios, or maybe even more choice by vote? The bad guys would ideally use vastly different arsenal and tactics. I feel like most games nowadays aim for something overly competitive and perfectly symmetrical. And while it's easier to balance, doesn't really feel as exciting as a well done asymmetrical mode. Mode. And the developer applies with asymmetrical TVT is really hard to pull off, especially since we have so much on our plates already. It's not written off as an idea, but I've touched on this in the past, stating that it's not in our current design plan. All right, let's move on to the next one. The next one says, night vision goggles? Will the field of view be affected with MBGs on or will it stay the same? And the developer applies with, there is depth of view when wearing them, but unlike in real life, it's almost impossible to simulate that level of blur with MBGs in game. However, they have limited limitations, especially when it comes to light. Firing your weapons could blow out your vision a fair bit with some of the guns, so then it becomes a matter of balancing what you put on your weapon with the equipment on your officer. Alright, let's push on to the next one. The next one says, bullets? Will the bullets really shoot from your gun muzzle like Rising Storm, or will it work more like the classic FPS? And the developer applies with, projectiles leave the barrel. Alright, let's move on. The next one says, helmet options? I think that there should be an option to add a whole lot of extra bulk to protect your head so that you don't end up failing a mission because someone jumped at you and got a headshot like in SWAT 4. I think it should disorient you and maybe take off half health to give you a chance while your team takes out the suspect. And the developer replies with, there's an option to have a helmet with an extra layer of protection. All right, pretty cool. Let's move on. The next one says, will there be armor degradation? Will getting your body armor hit cause it to be less effective break? And the developer replies with, armor has an integrity level. Hmm, interesting. Next one says, the 10mm Auto Beast. Will there be a Glock 20 available to shoot? I know there are different calibers and two bullet types, but a bear killer would definitely be cool to have in a game. Yes, it kills bears terrorists too. Alright, let's see what the developer has to say. It seems we have almost every viable round except 10 millimeter, but we'll be adding it. I didn't even realize it wasn't in the game. It's kind of surprising actually. The next one says, take your time please. I watched a stream on Twitch about a new launch of the game called Identity, and there was a lot of problems. Like so many problems and the game was in development for about four years, which I don't know why. Some people prepaid already, and it got so much shit on Steam reviews. It was really hard to see that game crash and burn in two hours. So what I'm trying to say is keep doing what you're doing. Be perfect. Make sure that there's no problems, but try and understand that we need some hype every now and then. Like a screenshot or like what you've already done with an ARG. So send nudes. No, but seriously, send some screenshots or something. Edit, I also shouldn't have said identity. It's still in early access, but still, four years? And the developer replies with, We're working our butts off to make sure the showcase of our game is as good as can be. The worst thing to do would be to show off, plus, subsequently release a rushed title. Fortunately, the entirety of Void Interactive seems to understand and agree with this. I hope so. Alright, let's move on. The next one we have, editing software? Weird question, but what editing software do you guys use? And the developer replies with, Premiere. They have the same thing as me. 
And it seems like they still can't spell Premiere just like how I can't spell Premiere. <laughs> right, moving on. The next one says, when the trailer was supposed to take no more than three months, and then he has a link that goes to a picture that says, so that was a fucking lie. Somebody in the comments says, a small development team needs to understand what deadlines are and to not tell the community a time period that they cannot achieve. That's how you kill a game. Nobody likes waiting. And the developer replies with, precisely why we haven't given any further comments on a date, despite everyone asking. Nobody likes waiting. Definitely true. But we don't need to release anything until we're ready to. Keep in mind the dates we gave weren't made up or set in order to appease the community's appetite. We had genuine beliefs we could make them. However, as game development goes, sometimes you need to step back and realize that making a mad dash will harm you more than it will do good. I remember reading the first dev blog and hearing that the game was to come out in June and July, but this kind of surprised me because they started developing it in like 2016, which is like almost under two years, which a game like Ready or Not would take anywhere from three to five years to create. And lo and behold, that's kind of true, because as soon as it gets to around February, it would be about, I believe, close to three years that Ready or Not has been in development. So we'll see how that goes. All right, moving on. The next one says, will there be a mission or scenarios on a boat or a cruise ship? Not sure if any scenarios have been released in detail yet, but I think it would be pretty cool to have some involving boats and cruise ships. And the developer replies with, not on release. So is he hinting at uh, future DLC, maybe? All right, let's move on. The next one says, Will characters blink? Will they have their eyes open 24 seven or will they blink sometimes? I'm actually serious. Characters blinking would be a neat little detail. And the developer replies with, they do more than blink. All right, moving on. The next one says, overpenetration? I think the addition of overpenetration would be good for this game. One would have to pay more attention to what's behind their target. Also, it would give another very good reason to use small caliber weapons. And the developer replies with, overpenetration is in the game and depends on many different factors, but mostly your choice in equipment. Okay, pretty cool. Moving on. What exactly should we be expecting from the gameplay trailer? I feel that a lot of people are expecting different things. Some people believe it'll be a single player mission that we're seeing while others are expecting a co-op mission to be in it. Some think it's a dev run through of the game, showing off different features while others think we'll be watching someone play through a typical mission that shows us a glimpse of all the different aspects of the game and how they combine together in one mission. I understand that it'll be eight plus minutes long and it's being recorded. I also understand that you guys don't want to reveal too much of the trailer, but I think it would be in mutual interest to prevent people's hope from being up. What should we be expecting? And what is your goal with this trailer? And the developer replies with, It will act as a showcase of Ready or Not's many features, art, and a little bit of insight into the world that we're building. Alright, pretty cool. Hopefully we'll get to see it sometime soon. <laughs> Moving on. Will this have an old R6 feeling? I have been playing R6 for years, since the Rogue Spear and Covert Ops days. Siege is good and all, but unrealistic in many aspects. Will this game have a TDM like the old R6s, and other PvP intense tactical game modes, along with real badass SWAT team cosmetics? Not the cartoony Fortnite shit. I'd also love to see old map remakes such as jungle, ER, hospital, storefront, and such. And the developer replies with, we do take some influence from the older Rainbow Six games. For example, the door system is very similar to those games. As others have said, there is a TDM mode where you can kill or arrest others. I believe that's VIP. P? Correct me if I'm wrong, I don't remember what mode that is. Alright, moving on. The next one says, Maybe just while we wait for the expected trailer to come, we could maybe get shown a 10 to 20 second mini clip of some combat gameplay? Not too much to spoil the hype though. Hey devs, all of us here at the wrong community know you're putting all the time and effort into making this game one of the best. A lot of us respect the delays due to all the meetings at work. I know we got shown a mini clip not too long ago, but maybe something a little more exciting could be shown to all the members of the wrong community. And just an update of where you guys have been with your work. I think the reason why a lot of people are complaining about the expected trailer is because of the mini clip it was not too much to look at at least we got something though i was thinking of a clip in combat but not too much to spoil the hype of the game also it could be recorded at a map like a house level that's all if you read this i hope you could give us a response and a mini clip it would make us more non-demanding for the trailer take care and all the best and the developer applies with 10 seconds 20 seconds 50 seconds it'll never be enough when there's so much anticipation for a full trailer patience is a virtue no one has paid for the game yet so there's no reason for us to release anything early not to worry good things are on the way. Somebody replies to that saying, and I respect that. Take all the time you need. Show us what you want to show us. And the developer replies with, definitely working as hard as we can. The person that made the comment in the first place says, thanks for your feedback. And the developer applies with, and thank you for interacting with the community. There's been a spike in people asking for the trailer lately, which makes sense as we are quickly approaching the new year. As I said above, however, we can afford this liberty because we haven't taken anyone's hard earned cash yet. All right, moving on. The next one says, how will information be given to the player? Quick question I thought of, since there will be little to no UI, how will the game give information it needs to the player? For example, in SWAT 4 Elite Force mod, the player would look at the door and give a command from a list. Or in regular SWAT 4, if you went up to a door, a little bar at the bottom 
bottom would pop up and tell you what it would do. Will it be similar in this game? Or will it be completely gone? And the developer replies with, there's UI for interacting with things, but it's no longer text. We've got little animated icons for everything. Oh, cool. Somebody in the comments says, will most information be through audio? And the developer replies with, not that sort of information. Needs to be conveyed visually, otherwise you would run into huge issues. Hmm, okay. All right, let's move on to the next one. The next one says, civilian dialogue? Will there be a unique civilian dialogue in certain missions, such as high-risk warrant raids? An annoying flaw with Swap 4 is that dialogue such as, I hope you're not too late, save us. I'm not shooting at anything. They're over there, not here. Just get me out of here. I thought you were going to rescue us, etc. repeats. This ruins the immersion for missions, such as raiding a restaurant or a gambling establishment. I hope Ron only uses such dialogue for actual hostage rescues and active threats. For warranted related raids, the dialogue should revolve around civilians insulting police, not understanding why guns are pointed at them, snarky remarks, etc. That can overlap with hostage dialogue, but hostage dialogue shouldn't overlap with normal civilian dialogue. Somebody in the comments says, as the devs have said in Dead Block 3, they hired 128 people to act and play for the NPC's animations. I'm sure they probably had different dialogues for them as well. And the developer replies with, We scanned over 200 individuals, but we didn't hire them for NPC animations or dialogue. Indie budget over here. Somebody replies to that saying, On this topic, how many voice actors we have working in the game? And the developer replies with, A very, very talented few. Without looking at the list, I think the number is at 20? Maybe less. There are 10 main characters if you include all the officers, talk, and dispatch. Same person replies to that saying, So I'm guessing the others are civilian suspects? It would be good swapping around voices for suspects and civilians to confuse players so they treat everyone as suspects and don't trust anybody. Easy Street replies with, Civilian suspects and other stuff we haven't revealed yet. I had a look for myself at the voice acting data and we have around 25 voice actors of all different backgrounds at the moment, but the number will almost certainly fluctuate as we nail down the right people for the roles. Even further down in the comments, somebody says, thank you for being honest. You didn't have to respond to this. And the developer replies with, no big deal. And to reply to the main post, the dialogue is situational based on the level the suspect civilian is in. Each character has a name, face, and backstory that we feed the voice actor. Our actors can attest to this if you can find them. It's loose, but it breathes extra life into the characters that otherwise would be filled with generic one-liners that get repeated over and over. That's actually quite a bit of insight that I didn't realize we were going to get. Well, I'm going to cut it here. So I think the plan that I'm going to do is to have a video like this out every week. So if you like this type of video, then stay tuned for more because there's quite a bit of stuff that we have to look into. I'm probably just going to call this the Reddit response series or I might leave it as what we know. I don't know. We'll think about it. All right, I want to thank everybody for coming out to watch and I guess I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.